an OMG are dedicated to provide the most complete training to help provide knowledge to allow inspectors to be more experienced in the field. If you're interested in topics pertaining to building science, let us know. In regards to my training tonight, it's basically about building science. It helps you to understand a little bit more about, and I'm taking crawl spaces for an instance tonight, and there's a lot of little details into there that spin to different areas to help you understand building science. I don't have much time this evening. Hollis has got me short tonight. In crawl spaces, we have the types of crawl spaces and we have the atmospheric or conditioned. Within the parameters of those two, as you can see by our drawings, this is typically what you're looking at with a basic foundation and a crawl space with a soil floor that typically is found in most of the older homes. Now, when we look at newer construction and even some of the older houses that have been retrofitted, they have a condition crawl space. It's basically your vapor barrier and your foam around the interior walls. Now, going back to what we typically find, foundation walls, either concrete or concrete blocks, and then you have a black vapor barrier on the floor. On the size of the foundation, pretty much, we know that 1,500 feet is another problem that enters into it. So within the 1,500 feet, we're looking at now the 30 by 50 building. Okay, with the 30 by 50 building, we know that without having any vapor barrier on the floor at all, we're supposed to have one vent for every 150 square feet of area. Now, putting that into a perspective, that's a lot of cross ventilation. So as we go back through here, I'll show you what happens when you deal with this and we lose the ventilation. Now, the other thing you wanna remember is crawl space access. Crawl space access deals with the 16 by 24 inch wide opening. This is supposed to be the minimum distance from the ground to the bottom of the floor joist is 18 inches. And that's the minimum crawl space. As you can see by the cross section here, you see where your door opening, you're dealing with your 18 inch high and 24 wide opening. Now, going a little bit further into this, we're looking at understanding the direction of that basement and the house in general. Why is that really important? What do we really care about the crawl space direction or the house direction? Okay, well, let's talk about vapor and let's talk about wind. Which way do they move? Typically, we're moving from south to north, depending on where we're at. West Virginia is pretty much southwest. It depends on where you're located in the area and in the country. You have to pay attention to where the direction of the wind is blowing and how the vapor moves through the building. How do you know this? Well, vapor moves through the building. If you go on the north side of the building when you have a temperature differential in the morning and you drop from 60 degrees in the fall and you go down to 40, the damp side of that wall is typically where the vapor is moving. And that's typically the predominant side where the vapor and moisture is moving through the building at all times. Now, atmospheric has a dirt floor, okay? Within that dirt floor, okay? That typically requires Now, you're seeing the Pink Panther through the insulation, but what's the one thing that's gonna to happen to that insulation paper when we hit high humidity levels in the summertime? And we have a lot of vapor and moisture moving through those open vents through the crawl space. Well, we're naturally going to assume that that air is just naturally going to blow through that area. Well, it does, but it also has the tendency to make the insulation wet and causes it to sag. Then we also have some issues that deal with the insulation vapor barrier. Within the vapor barrier, what we're dealing with is understanding where does it belong. Vapor barrier is located adjacent to the conditioned space, not turned upside down where the vapor barrier is facing the unconditioned space. Because when we see that, we've all been in homes where the paper's hanging, and it's full of mold or some type of moisture. Well, that moisture typically indicates the same thing you would find when you deal with an open crawl space that has turned in the correct direction. That means the being wet on the bottom. And if you go into a crawl space with high humidity, 
droplets under the on the height of the crawl space. Now, let's lay it in a little bit deeper. Let's talk about impermeability. Impermeability deals with, there are three classifications. The vapor retarder class shall be defined using desiccant method, or the STM E96 as the follows. What you wanna understand is the class one, class two, and class three vapor retarder, okay? So what we're looking for in a crawl space is a class one vapor retarder. That is what you're looking for when you're out doing inspections or doing buildings, class one. Now, to look at this in a perspective, what is the definition of a desiccant? Many of you have an understanding of desiccant, many of you, you don't. It's basically a substance to induce, sustain a state of dryness in its vicinity. Let's take, for instance, the windows that were made for years and are still made today. Insulated glass windows, in order to remove the remaining moisture when they seal the units, they drop desiccant powder inside of that to absorb the moisture in the, between the two panes of glass. And that's what's used to remove the moisture from insulated glass panes after they're created, desiccant powder. We also know desiccant powder as a piece of material that's hanging from your shelf in your bedroom closet that we've been hanging to absorb moisture, or excessive moisture in a closet area because they're damp and your clothes are moist. So that is what a desiccant is. That's what they use to determine what those values are that pertain to vapor. So what is water vapor? Truly, water vapor, it's a cinnamon for a vapor retarder. But sometimes the texts refer to the word retarder to barrier because barrier implies 100% blockage of water molecules or moisture. There are few materials that provide 100% barrier to moisture. Glass is a great example to prevent 100% movement of moisture. Two inch polyisinerate insulation board that's required in all the foundations for new construction today. That is an impermeable material. Two inch closed cell spray foam insulation. That is an impermeable material. So as you get into understanding crawl spaces, you have to understand what's impermeable, what's permeable, how much moisture is coming in through the building, through the walls. Now, I didn't get into it, but I'll back up for a second and tell you that concrete, depending on its mass, can and restrict moisture. However, concrete block does not allow for that because it has a hollow space which allows for the transfer of air and moisture. Not so much the air, but the vapor going through the block. Now, what is the first condensing surface in an exterior house wall? This a trick question. What is the first condensing surface in an exterior house wall? House wrap, exterior substrate, is it a wall stud, insulation, drywall, or is it none of the above? Put your answer in the chat window so Sean can tally him up after class is over and we'll see how we the way out. And then next, we, next month we'll go into this and give you some answers on this. But this helps you to understand a little bit about what is the first condensing surface. It's a really trick question. And unless you understand building science, you're not gonna understand this. Condition crawl spaces. According to the code, it's an unvented crawl space. Ventilation openings and under the floor surfaces specified in these sections shall not be required where the following items are provided. Exposed earth is covered with a continuous class one vapor retarder. The joints on the plastic of the vapor retarder shall be overlapped six inches and they shall be sealed and taped. The edges of the retarder shall extend not less than six inches up the stem wall and shall be attached and sealed to the stem wall or insulation board. Now, what's a class one vapor retarder? Well, let's look at the chart. As you can see, if you look at two mil or four mil poly, it's a 0.16. So that means we need a six mil or greater. Now, giving you a little better understanding, the white plastic that you see in the crawl spaces that you've walked into that are encapsulated by foundation companies, 
that a 15 to a 20 mil rating. So it's nearly an impermeable surface. That's why it's so heavy. Now, a lot of us remember the old days of the 40s, 50s, 60s, they used to put, you know, tar paper down. It doesn't really have, and that's your asphalt coated paper. Bottom line, that's on insulation, but there's really minimal. Now, class one vapor barter. It's a 0.1 perm or less. Six mil plastic barrier has a perm rating of 0.06. That is why it is suggested in the building code as the vapor barrier of choice. So if you're looking to understand what type of materials to be installed in a crawl space area on the floor and up the walls and how to do it, this is it, class one. Okay, why is the perm rating important? The lower the perm rating, that means that there is a lower amount of moisture entering the crawl space. That would be the ultimate goal of ab encapsulation or a condition crawl space. Crawl spaces, why? A more efficient house is a house that has controlled moisture. Moisture when mixed with warm air creates mold. Now, looking at this in a little general area, I want all of you to understand one thing. If we took the insulation board away from these walls and all you saw was the cross ventilation, and we know that the air is moving from south to north. What happens at that particular point is all of the air blowing from the south side to the north side is going to collect over there on this side because we got a front porch, we got a back porch, we have a garage. So this air now turns into a vault. So all the moisture and humidity blowing through here is not going in anywhere except into this cavity that creates a mold situation. So that explains why when you walk into a crawl space and one end of the building might have more insulation hanging down than another or more mold than another, it's understanding the process of the direction of the house and know how that air is moving through that crawl space. Uh, these are just getting into a couple little things. Hollis, you got me down on time. I'm watching. Okay. So getting into going back into the understanding of everything that we have to offer, I want to get into the building science a little deeper. I want everybody to understand what we're dealing with. And within the parameters of that, I want to all know that we at the ASHI and the OMG want to help to educate everyone in this organization to be better inspectors.